Hi, I'm Neeraj Shah, and today I'm sharing three things that I do to reduce stress. And I'm doing this on behalf of our partners, Live Well Events, and they run super inclusive fitness, health, and well being events. And like us at Mind Unlocked, they also believe that a healthy mind is as important as a healthy body. So I had a very sudden and serious stroke at the age of 30, and that um, I've been very lucky to recover. And that took an interest in health and well being into an absolute obsession with learning about what happens in our brain, about how we can safeguard our well-being, and so on and so forth. So it, it comes from that. My whole take on health and well-being comes from the aftermath of that incident and all of the things I've learned in the nearly 10 years since that happened. So the first thing I'll share with you is, that I do to help me to manage stress in my life is a practice of gratitude. Now, before you turn off, because that sounds like something a bit hippy-dippy and about being kind to the world, which, by the way, I think those are really cool things, but everything that I look at, I look for the evidence base, and everything we do at Mind Unlocked is practical and evidence-based, and it's led by research that we found and interrogated and looked at. And yet, my first recommendation is still about gratitude. And what I mean by that, in my particular case, because I had this very serious incident and I'm fundamentally very lucky to even be here alive and intact, it's really easy for me on a daily basis to feel really grateful for the fact that I am alive and the fact that I have a roof over my head and that there's food on the table. And, you know, it doesn't mean that there's no problems in my life, but it's just this acknowledgement of the things that we very quickly take for granted um, actually are things that once we start being grateful for them, it actually takes us out of stress. And this has been shown repeatedly through various studies and things that we can point at. So um, the, the point I'm making here is that by doing it on purpose, by actually finding time to be grateful for things, that's a really simple but effective strategy to take ourselves out of stress temporarily. So that's the first thing I wanted to share. The, the second thing is actually prioritizing the importance of our own health and well-being, which is not the easiest thing to do when we're juggling jobs and families and commitments and relationships and all of these various things. And it's such an easy thing for us to do all of those things, but neglect to look after ourselves, thinking I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow. But the problem is that if we don't take regular action on this, then it will build up and eventually our minds and or bodies will absolutely break down. And in the same way that we need, we know that we need to feed a certain amount of nutrition into our bodies and get a certain amount of rest, we also need to, these days, look after our mind in the same way uh, because there's so many distractions in the world and so many things competing for our attention and so many things that we're all trying to do whilst we you know, try to live our fullest lives. So for me, a fundamental practice, which won't surprise you, has been cultivating meditation. And yeah, yeah, we all, you know, we've all heard that meditation's going to be great for us, but it's not that easy to actually build that habit. So if, uh, and, and the point with meditation is that it's absolutely foundational because there's a multiple reward for meditating regularly. It's not just about reducing stress and feeling calmer, although those things can happen, but it's just as much about learning to train our brains to be more focused in this uh, crazy world that we live in. It's just as much about tapping into our creativity. And again, these are all things that there's studies, robust studies that have backed up that all of these things can happen. And if in particular you want to get going with meditation and it hasn't really happened for you yet, then I'd encourage you to go to our website, uh, mindunlock.co and you, from there you'll be able to put your email in and get get our top tips on how to actually make this habit work and breaking all of the myths that we see out there uh, and that that's something that I'd absolutely encourage you to do so number two is placing importance on our health and well-being and uh, for me that's meditation but for you it might be actually just knowing that you need to um, up your game on nutrition or that you need to move more or, or the biggie um, that getting really good sleep so that's tip number two tip number three is what i would call taking time every single day for 
low heart rate activities where we can get lost in the moment. So, and the reason I phrase it that way is because now I'm talking about things like reading, walking in nature, but not walking in nature with your phone, but actually paying attention to what's going on around us. Uh, it could be creating art, it could be playing music, it could be spending time with loved ones, but the ones who actually uplift us rather than drag us down. And the point of this is that by building that in every day, it's a really good way to start counteracting the effects of adrenaline, the effects of cortisol. And the really key thing here is um, low heart rate activities where we can actually get lost in the moment. So this would not include things like heavy gym sessions or HIIT training or uh, running around at full speed, but it would definitely include things like uh, a really light jog or, um, you know, if, if you're a skier or snowboarder or surfer and you have those things available to you and it's really low effort for you, then it include things like that. So that's my third tip, just making sure that we cultivate low heart rate activities where we can get lost in the moment. And again, that's so important today because we're in this crazy world where if we let the world run its course without these interventions ourselves, then we are constantly going to be triggering our adrenaline, our cortisol. And if we keep on building those things up, that leads to increased heart rate, more sugar in the blood, uh, more um, a higher uh, baseline of these kind of problems. And it doesn't take a genius to figure out where those issues lead to. So in conclusion, stress itself is not the issue. Stress actually gets a bit of a bad rap. We need stress to get things done. We need a bit of pressure to actually achieve a few things. But it's the accumulation of too much stress consistently without doing any of these things that start counteracting those effects. So I hope these tips are super, super useful. If you want a weekly download of the latest mental wellbeing resources, then we share that every week in our mailing list. Again, you can go to our website and find that information and sign, sign up and get that. And also I'd encourage you to get yourself along to the Live Well Events event. And it's a good way to get exposed to some of the best thinking in the industry in, in a very holistic way, which isn't about rah-rah fitness, but actually about how can we really look after ourselves. So wherever you are, I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks.